Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode of Project Fair Lady, my 1968 SR20 DET powered Datsun Roadster. All right, on the last uh, episode, we wrapped up just trying to get some of the cooling and, uh, or I guess some of the engine fittings done. Uh, the oil si situation under control. We're still waiting on a few parts for that. So today we're gonna start working on the hot side of the engine. Um, I've got a manifold that I uh, hope will fit this time. Um, I actually measured uh, twice and, and uh, hopefully I'm only gonna cut once this time. So a big thank you to my buddy Ethan for welding this up for me and uh, fixing it and then welding it up again after we measured everything incorrectly. Actually, I take that back. I measured everything incorrectly. He did a pretty good job of it. So um, let's get this put in place here, uh, kind of mocked up, and let's see if we can't start building the downpipe and exhaust system. Should be pretty straightforward, right? No, nothing fits in here. Nothing is straightforward. All right, so one of the products I'm really excited about, it's not a huge thing, it's not the ECU, it's not anything massive. It's actually something very, very small and not very expensive, but I think it's gonna make a big difference to the ease of fabrication of the exhaust system. Uh, this is a product that was, uh, I was told about by my friends at Pure Tuning. Uh, this is a ATP uh, turbo flange adapter. So it goes from the five bolt flange that the T25 SR20 turbos use to a three inch V-band absolutely huge, game-changing. These have been around for a little while, but this is just a game-changing product in, in the ease in which you can make a downpipe because now you just make a three inch um, straight downpipe tube. It's easy to manufacture, it's easy to put on, and uh, if you do need to remove it, it's pretty easy to remove. In addition, it's just this nice cast piece, very smooth transition everywhere. So awesome piece, super excited for this part of the build. So now that I have the turbo fitted where I want it to be, um, we're gonna have to make a couple more modifications on the intake side. I'm just gonna lop off the OEM flange and weld a 90 on there uh, to get it pointed toward where the intercooler is going to be. And in the back, uh, we've gotta get a downpipe to fit. Now, I could, uh, let me just flash up a little, <laughs> a little clip here so you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, there is virtually no room for a downpipe on this side of the car, it was never intended to be. I've seen some guys try to run them between the manifold and the steering column, kind of down real close to the transmission tunnel. That's just gonna cause heat soak issues on the track, so I don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is actually lop some of this body, uh, body material out of the way to create a tunnel area for it to go. This is just box, non-chassis, non-structural related stuff. I'm gonna cut it out, weld in obviously back well back in reinforcement uh, to make it better than where I left it, but I am gonna open that up so I can run it on the outside of the steering column. Just try to buy a little bit more airspace in general. Um, and I think that's gonna work out really well. So pull the turbo back off, uh, start creating that hole about where I think it needs to be. And we may have to die grind out a little bit to, to get it to fit, but I think it's gonna be a good fit once it's done. So start fabbing up that downpipe.
pretty much wraps up the exhaust um, to a point, and that point is just in front of the rear axle. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned this too much on this build so far, but I'm kind of stopping the exhaust right there because I'm going to be doing some serious modifications to the rear axle on this car. Um, I am going to keep the factory Datsun axle in place. I've got an LSD on order from it. Hopefully that shows up from Japan soon. Um, but the other thing I'm going to do is modify the rear end, convert it from leaf springs to coilovers, and kind of create some type of a semi three link suspension setup. I'm still working with my good friend Alex, who is a wonderful suspension engineer, um, just way smarter than I am in that regard. So I reached out to help, uh, to get help from a friend, and that's where we're going with that. So I've stopped the exhaust at that point because I don't quite know where all the suspension arms are going to be just yet. So once we get the uh, suspension more finalized, I'll finish the exhaust to get it up and over the axle and out the back of the car. Uh, worst case right now, if I had to drive it, I could just put a little turn down on it and do a mid exit out of the car. It wouldn't sound the greatest, but it would work. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's all stainless up to this point. I've got to add a couple of hangers in as well. And for you eagle eyed viewers, you may have noticed that the front cross brace on the exhaust side is missing that is going to go back in. Um, it just needs to be modified to fit. And that modification is just gonna include some cutting and then re-welding it in and then putting some structure underneath. I did modify the rear cross brace from the original pass-through and just kind of open that up to fit the three inch exhaust. Um, and the only reason I haven't done the front cross member is because those were part of the ones I replaced when I went to the six speed transmission. So it's modern uh, box steel, and the easiest way to do it is just gonna be doing it from the top with the body off. So when the body comes back off, I'll get that cross member put back in, kind of do all the other finished welding that needs to be done on the chassis before it goes off to paint and uh, rust removal. So next up, let's put the car back down on the ground, uh, get up under the hood, and start working on that oil cooler remote mount setup. 